Hi, this is Dr. Sue Cooper with the lecture video for Accounting 201 at Towson University. In this uh, video, we're going to be looking at Chapter 5, Lecture Notes, Page 3. In the last video, we went uh, through how to calculate net revenue from your sales and services revenue uh, and subtracting all of your contra accounts for sales discounts, returns, and allowances. There's a concept we need to cover here, and that is that if we have reason to believe that there is going to be sales discounts or returns or allowances coming up related to sales we made in the current period, those actually need to be included in the allowances during the current period. So let's look at this example here, and I think you'll understand what I mean. Kelly's Jewelry has the following transactions during the year. Total jewelry sales of 750000 sales discounts of 20,000, sales returns of 50, and sales allowances of 30. So we would record those. That's what's happened this year. We would record those just like that on our income statement here. And this one would be 750. Let me. Don't write this down because we're going to change it in a minute. This one would be 750,000 and then we would subtract the returns of 50 and the allowances of 30 and the discounts of 20. And we would end up then with net sales of 650,000. Don't write this down yet. The problem is we have reason to believe that we are going to have more sales and returns and allowances of these sales. So these sales here, the 750, we think that we're gonna get a couple more returns and discounts and allowances from those sales in the next period. So if they relate to the current period, much with the idea, much like the idea of the adjusting entries, um, if we incur those returns, allowances and discounts now, even if they haven't actually recognized them, and they haven't actually happened yet, we need to include those in our returns and allowances. So we need to include these estimates of the future in our reporting. So here we've got uh, this um, statement. In addition, at the end of the year, the company estimates the following transactions associated with jewelry sales in the current year will occur in the next year. So we think that there's gonna be more. And we're going to include those in our reporting. So we're going to add the returns. We're going to add that 6,000 to the 50 that we already have. The allowances, we're going to add that 4,000 to the 50 or to the 30 we already had. And then the sales discounts, we're going to add that additional two. And so that will give us an even lower net sales. Six hundred thirty-eight. Now those might not actually come true because they're just estimates, um, and then we might have to adjust them again next year based on what actually happens. But if we have reason to believe that something is going to happen in the next period related to the sales for this period, those estimates need to be included in this uh, these contra accounts. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about estimates. <laughs> When people don't pay their bills, we call that uncollectible accounts or bad debts. Bad debt is actually recorded as an expense. So sales returns and allowances uh, and discounts, these are all contra revenue accounts, but <clears throat> that come off of our revenue. But when a customer just straight up doesn't pay their bill, we call that a bad debt and it gets recorded as an expense. Um, and then I asked the same question that I did at the first of, on the first video. Why do companies sell on account if they expect some accounts will be uncollectible? And the answer is that they think that granting credit will be attractive enough to their customers that they will increase their sales and increase their net income enough to uh, offset any bad debts that happen to arise, any customers that end up not paying. So we've got two different ways that we can write off these bad debts, two ways to record this expense for customers who end up not paying their bill. 
Uh, one of them is called direct write-off. That's this one here. And the direct write-off method says that we just wait until someone doesn't pay and then we record the bad debt expense when they don't pay. Um, so it's just kind of a as you go sort of method. This is not how we GAP requires us to do our bad debt expense. GAP requires us to actually make estimates on every sale and all of our uh, accounts receivable to estimate how many of these um, outstanding receivables we have that we think aren't actually going to be paid. And the estimates are usually based on past experience and uh, what our customers typically have done in the past. We usually use that as an estimate of what they're going to be doing in the future. This method of estimating is called the allowance method. And this is what GAP requires us to do. Oh, I'll make it green. So the allowance method, we look at our accounts receivable, we make an estimate of how many of them we're actually gonna be able to collect and the rest of them, we write them off before they actually don't pay. And that kind of makes this little slush fund for us. So when customers do actually end up not paying their bills, we'll have this uh, slush fund already set up and the bad debt expense already recorded. This helps prevent fraud. Because when we allow people, uh, companies to record accounts receivable and then only write it off as an expense when the customer doesn't pay, what we find is that the companies tend to never write them off. And their assets can just get bigger and bigger and bigger with all these old, old receivables that are actually never going to get paid. But the company says, oh no, they are, they're gonna pay. Mm, they're really not. And it can, it can be misleading to investors because they think the company has a lot of assets that they actually don't have. Really what they have is just a lot of IOUs that nobody's ever gonna pay for. So we force companies to use the allowance method for GAP so that we are constantly recording bad debt as we go so that we are not surprised when all of a sudden it turns out their customers aren't actually paying their bills. All right, that is the end of page three. We're gonna learn about the um, allowance method in the following videos.